Alrighty, let's get started. Uh, if this is the first video you're checking out, I highly recommend checking out the intro video first just because that covers a couple of uh, key components that we're going to be using. I won't cover them in great detail in this other than just how to set it up for the settings that I'm using. Uh, so you can basically just follow along and hopefully end up with a similar result. Um, but yeah, if you didn't watch the intro video, watch that because that will cover these components in a lot more detail than I plan to do so than I plan to do here. So the first thing we need, uh, I've added a canvas, um, as I sort of said in the intro, uh, make sure you've got a canvas in there, one that you're happy with and the screen size works and all the rest. Uh, a good way to do this uh, would actually be to add two images in uh, and just anchor them to the top left and the bottom right of the screen. Uh, so you can sort of see them here and if you then adjust the aspect ratios uh, you'll be able to see if they're actually sticking to the right screen size correctly or not. Uh, it's just a good little thing I've found. Uh, it just helps you to know if your screen is scaling correctly, uh, or your canvas, I should say. Uh, cool, I'll get rid of them. Okay, so I just have a canvas laid out. Uh, nothing fancy, just a very basic thing. Uh, we're going to add to it an image. So a game object UI image, and there it is. Um, I'm going to anchor it to the center, and if you're not familiar with that, it's just yeah, clicking, holding Alt, and clicking the center one there, or whichever you'd prefer. Cool. So the image uh, doesn't have anything attached to it at the moment. I'm going to use some of the sprites I have. Uh, ultimately, it doesn't matter. You can set this up however you like. It doesn't even have to be an image. Uh, no, it doesn't. It doesn't have to be an image. Um, it just generally will be if it's a UI. Um, so I'm just going to drag this over here so you can actually see it. Um, I've got a few here. I'm just going to pick uh, light blue. Why not? Yeah, look at that. Gorgeous. Um, and I'm going to define a width and a height for it. So what have we got? It's just sitting in the center. Uh, this first one, what am I making? I'm making a list of buttons, just a vertical... Uh, list of scrollable buttons. So we'll make this taller than it is wide. Uh, we'll set the width to 200, the height to, I don't know, 300? Yeah, 350. There we go. Looks good. Nice. Um, <laughs> sweet. And once again, I've got the canvas saved as a prefab, so I'm just going to apply that. I do that a lot out of habit. Please forgive me. Uh, okay, so this is sort of going to be the... Um, I want to say background for our menu. It'll be, imagine this is the menu that, you know, you click a button and it pops out of the top of the screen or something. I don't, I don't know, whatever, whatever works for you. Uh, but this essentially is like, treat this as the, the background for the whole menu. Uh, we're, so we're going to have the scroll bar and the content sitting on top of this. Cool. So I'm actually going to name that image. Uh, I'm going to call this one, uh, what will it be? It'll be a button scroll list. So this is our main parent object, doesn't matter what you call this, just something easy for you to identify. Uh, the button scroll list, cool, easy. Under that, we're going to create another image. So, childed to the scroll list, another image, just like that. Uh, I'll give this one a different colour. Uh, light red, that's very light red, maybe not, maybe dark red? That's not really any better, uh, why did I even create these, honestly? Oh, you know what, I'm, I'm going to give it light green, that's a bit nicer. Um, I'm <laughs> we won't see this. Uh, this, this one doesn't matter, this is actually going to be our mask, um, so we won't even see this picture. And we're going to call that one button list uh, viewport. So as I explained in the intro video, you, wanna, you want the main parent object, your scroll list itself, the menu, uh, the background, whatever, uh, but then you want the viewport, which is actually going to be the the scrollable area of the menu, uh, or at least the visible scrollable area of the menu. Uh, to the viewport we're going to attach a mask, uh, which I've already got searched for there, that's helpful. There we go. Um, and like I said, we don't have to see that green, so you can always untick that to hide it from view. Um, it's handy to have on though while you get your sizing right. Um, we're going to set the size of that to be what we want. Um, I'll have the scroll bar on the right of the object, I suppose, uh, and we'll have it fairly tall. So I'll say 150. Yeah, all right, why not? Uh, height, what was this? I can't remember what this was. 300? It was more, I think it was 350. So I might make it 320. How about that? There we go. 
and I'll just move that a little bit off center so it's just sitting a bit to the left. To the scroll list, I'm also going to add something else. So right click, UI, scroll bar. There we go. Um, and how's this one going to work? I think we want this one. So on the scroll bar script, so this is on the actual scroll bar object itself, uh, the direction I'm going to set to, I think bottom to top is what we want. So if the list is populated we'll be seeing the bottom of the list so it's going from bottom to top that's what we want uh, otherwise we would the default state would be the top object I believe uh, it doesn't matter <laughs> work it out um, alright I'm going to adjust the height of that one a bit uh, we'll make that 250 no <laughs> no we'll make it much taller make it 320 just to line up with the mask uh, that would be a bit nicer I believe that was 320. Yep, 320, 320. Uh, the width of the object, I believe you can't have a scroll bar below 20, so if you want it to be a bit narrower, you might need to adjust the scale of the object um, rather than the width of it. Um, I don't usually like altering the scale if I can avoid it of UI elements because it tends to scrunch them up a little bit. Um, I suppose that these kind of values it doesn't matter. I'm just going to leave it at one for now. It looks a bit fat, but that's not, you know not the end of the world. Uh, on the scroll bar itself, you can also adjust the colors of it if you wanted to. Uh, so I might just set that to a, a gray color. I don't know, something like that. Uh, leave the button white. You can adjust the button colors down here. Um, but that's about all you need to worry about with the scroll bar itself, the object. Um, now that we've got that set, go back to the scroll list. Um, and we're going to... Actually, no, I won't add that component yet, sorry. <laughs> we'll go to the viewport. Uh, we're going to add another image. And this image will call button list content. So it's the content of the button list as the viewport button list and the actual scroll list itself. And the parenting and the childing, I guess, if that's a word, uh, of these objects matters. So you do want the viewport to be childed to the list and the content to be childed to the viewport. Make sure. Important. Just do that. Uh, cool, alright, um, I'm going to apply all that, just so it's saved. Okay, the content itself, um, as I explained in the intro video, this the size of this isn't quite as important. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is attach something to that content so that it has a size reference. Uh, and I'm going to attach a UI button. There it is on the screen, don't worry about the size, that will change in a second. Um, but it's important to have at least one button on there so that the size of the content object is going to fit itself to it. Now that we've got that there, back on the content object, we're going to add a... what are we adding? We're going to add a vertical layout group, which will change to upper center, and I'll change the spacing to... we'll start with 5. The rest of the values should be fine. Now I changed it to upper center because it basically dictates where where on the content object is this is the content going to uh, sit when it's created. Uh, we want it to sit in the center, I guess. Um, if this were a different, like it doesn't matter. It just depends what you're making. Uh, play with that, but you'll see it like upper right, upper left, center, middle center, etc., etc. Um, we'll go with upper center. I think that's the one we want for now. I'm just going to apply these as well so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, we're also, now that we've got a layout group, we want... Uh, what do we want? We want a content size fitter. And we want the horizontal fit... Um, horizontal fit, probably min size, vertical fit, min size. Uh, and that's basically going to wrap the content object around the content. And I'll just apply that. Now, next we're going to, actually here, yeah, we can't adjust it through there, so I might need to adjust the size of the button itself. So the width of um, 50, what's that now? <laughs> Let's make it a bit bigger, 100, there we go, that looks a bit nicer. Uh, 100 by 30, that looks fine to me. Just apply that. Um, for the content, I'm going to disable the image just so that hides. Uh, so we just have the button sitting on the on the background there. I'll go back to the viewport and I'm going to untick the show mask graphic just so it disappears. Uh, and now that button actually looks a bit odd, so I might uh, expand it a little bit. There we go. Cool. 
apply all that. Alright, cool. So that's pretty good so far. We have a button sitting in the center. Uh, if there were multiples of those buttons, it would probably... Uh, actually, it wouldn't, wouldn't work yet, but we have, the, <laughs> we have the layout going, which is what we want. Uh, we've got our button that's going to act as sort of the template for any other spawn buttons. We have our scroll bar, um, we have like our main background, etc., and the hidden viewport object. We're going to go back to the scroll list, and we're going to add a scroll rect component. Going to, for the content, I'm going to pick the button list content, so this is the actual scrollable content, so the content object. Uh, we only want it to scroll vertically, so we can untick horizontal. I'm going to set the movement type to clamped. Then I'm going to leave these three values as default. The viewport, well, we want to be the button list viewport object, so the parent of the content. Uh, and the vertical scroll bar, we don't have a horizontal, but we do have a vertical. Uh, and I might actually name that as well, it probably won't hurt. Button list scroll bar. Uh, naming these objects sort of matters because when you are assigning values through the editor here, it just helps a bit. So you can see it there, button list scroll bar, nice and easy. Um, visibility, you can set this to auto hide. Uh, I'm not sure about the expand viewport, I think that will actually yeah, it will increase depending on how many items you have. Uh, I've never used it, but feel free to play around. Uh, auto hide will, as it says, auto hide the scroll bar if there's no scrollable content. So uh, if there's not enough buttons that the list is scrollable, there won't be a scroll bar. It's up to you if you use that or not. I'm just going to leave it to permanent for now. Um, so because we've assigned this to, you'll notice you can no longer see like the scroll button, I guess you'd call it, um, has increased in size because it's set to permanent. Um, it's showing us that there isn't enough content, so there is no scrollable area, so you can't use that button, so it's expanded to cover the whole thing. You'll sort of see when when we add more buttons, that will shrink. Cool. Um, I'm just going to apply that. That should be the setup. There's a few things we want to adjust, but I'm just double-checking this. Um, if I turn the mask back on, we can see the size of the viewport. Um, so that's important because this will define uh, the, both the visible and the scrollable area. Uh, and then we have the content itself. Right, back on the viewport, turning that mask off. Just apply that. Okay, so you've no, you might have noticed that this button's sitting in the center, which may not necessarily be what you want. You might want the button to start at the top or start at the bottom. I believe we can adjust that through the pivot points on the content object. I think it's the content. It's either the content or the viewport. We'll soon find out. Um, so, X and Y, obviously, 1 being max Y, uh, 0 being minus, uh, min Y. Uh, same goes for X. 0 is the minimum, 1 is the maximum. Um, so if I set the Y's pivot point of the content object to be 1, it's going to jump up the top there which is probably a bit drastic, not quite what we wanted. So we might actually want to shrink the size of that viewport object down a little bit. Um, so if I just set that to 300. And yeah, why is it doing this? Just set that back to what it was. Ah, sorry guys, I don't know why. That's, it's working fine now. <laughs> um, so all I did was adjust for the list content object, uh, the pivot point Y to 1, uh, and as you can see it's now happily positioned itself uh, at the top there, which I'll just apply. Uh, if we run that, it should hopefully be sitting in the same spot. There we go. Uh, we can click on it, but we can't scroll because there's nothing to scroll yet. Cool! Cool! So this is where, if you were handcrafting this menu, um, you could simply, say, duplicate it uh, and assign different functions to the menu. And you'll see that as we scroll past that point, uh, sorry, not scroll, but as we add items past the point, the content size fitter is adjusting the size of the content object, um, which is giving us this scrollable section and decreasing the size of the scroll button. Um, so it's all sort of working in tandem with each other. It's all updating itself and and doing what it needs to do, which is good. That's what we want. Um, however, I have a feeling I may have set the scroll bar up wrong. Let's just have a quick look. Um, actually, no, that feels about right. There we go. Scroll to the bottom. Scroll to the top. So that's the basic 
menu layout for for that. That's that's the the UI side of things. Um, that is how you get all these components to work together. Um, it is fiddly. You, like I said, you will get a bit frustrated. Um, it's it's hard to sort of avoid. The UI just is a bit weird sometimes. Um, like even in that case, where I don't, I'm not really sure what fixed it. I just you know, move things back, like move things, move them back a couple of times, hit apply a couple of times, and eventually it just worked and it was happy. So, uh, sorry about that. I hope it does sort of go according to plan for you. Um, but yeah, that's that's the menu there. So in the next video for the button list, I'm actually going to show you. So rather than hand, like handcrafting or laying out these buttons. Uh, by hand, I'll show you a way that we can instantiate a series of them um, based on a couple of different things. So you can do it based on a list of objects or whatever, uh, or you can do it a certain number of times. Uh, we're just going to use a couple of different loops to get that to work. Uh, but I'll cover that one in the next video, so stick around and we'll get to it shortly.